Well, listen, I, the, I, I'm very excited to see this film for you and celebrate it for you because not only are you a star of it, you're a producer of it. Yes. And I want to hear from you. I've, everybody who has come by tonight has raved to me about your producer work. And I want to hear from you about the sort of creative opportunities that gives you. It's not your first time producing. You know, when you're, when you're combining the two roles for one production, tell me about that experience. You lose a lot of hair. You get gray fast. You don't have any sleep. You're constantly angry and stressed. But... You have the right to say it needs to be better. You have the right to stop things. You have the right to find the money. You have the right to fight for people. The first film I ever really solely produced was Miss Congeniality, and I shot that here. And so uh, it, uh, I started off on a good note. Um, I love it. I love it, but I stopped for a while because I have two beautiful children that needed a parent. And once they got sick of me, I just said, all right, you're coming with me, and I'm going to do this. And because I end up doing it anyway when I'm an actor. You just you just want to give everything. So I get to do it. And I feel really, really lucky about that. I think that's a cool sign that you care about your projects. That's awesome. That's, yeah, and, <laughs> that's fair. My last question for you. I want to hear about, I know that you called Brad and you said, listen, I did one for you. Come to one for me. Is didn't that how that... Didn't even talk to Brad. Brad and I have the ha same hairstyles. He does our hair on movies. Her name's Janine Rath Thompson. Um, she was doing his hair for Bullet Train, and he said, can you call Sandy and get her to do this film? He never called me, so I talked only through Janine. And then once I agreed to do that, I then talked through Janine to get Brad to do this film. So Janine Rath Thompson is actually the conduit for our work. That's fun. Well, shout out to Janine. Hey. Oh, always a shout out to Janine. It's all about hair. It's always about hair. Oh, well, Sandra, thank you so much. I can't wait to see Lost City. Thank you. thank you, thank you. So, listen, you grew up before the world's eyes as Harry Potter, a hero. Now you're in Lost City as a villain, flexing a whole new dark side. Tell me about what the experience was like to go play a villain. Oh, dude, I mean, it was great. He's, he's a villain. He is a villain. He's also like a villain that is still like desperate to be liked um, oh, and, yeah. by the people that he's kidnapping, uh, which is a tough line to walk as a, as a captor. Um, but yeah, so there's something like, I found there's something like endearingly pathetic about him. Um, and yeah, it was a huge amount of fun to play. Like the, the you know, just to, to be able to play opposite Sandra and, you know, I grew up watching her movies and it was very weird and intimidating, but like incredibly cool to work with her. That's awesome. When you come to the premieres like this, this, this far into your career, who do you bring with you? Who are you most excited to see the film? Who are you most nervous you know, to have see the film? Actually, um, it's been the first time in a while I've brought my parents for this one. So they've, they've come out to Austin to see this, um, which is cool. Um, but generally speaking, uh, I don't know, I keep it pretty small at premieres. Like, I, I don't like, it's, they're fun, but they are also like, you know, they're slightly crazy. So you, if I invite a friend, it's like, okay, come in. And then, you know, just sit at the back, find a place to sit because it's going to be mental for a few hours. Um, yeah. I imagine the folks still get pretty excited for nights like this, though. They do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're very excited. They're very... I actually, I'm suddenly wondering if I've told my mom. Uh, yeah, because you're not about, you have to bring clear bags in, and I'm not sure that's been communicated to my mom, so I might have to catch up. I think you can the snag a bag tag from one of the employees. And then I might have to. Yeah, exactly. This to my mom. I think they'll take care of you. I hope so. Now, also, you, you work so much with Sandra Bullock in the film on set, but she's also a producer. Yeah. What kind of, what, what, I would love to hear about when she's on set, what was that like working with her? as an actress and a producer I mean as an actress she's obviously you know incredible and generous and giving and playful which is all the stuff you want in, in this movie um, I cannot say enough about how I'm impressed I was with her as a producer uh, her and obviously Liza our other producer is extraordinary um, but she would literally be getting pulled out of the water at the, for doing stunt sequences and get back onto the holding boat and be like scheduling marketing meetings and stuff like she a lot of actors take like a vanity producer credit this is not that she may this movie. Wow, that's awesome. And I know that in the trailer it looks like things get pretty crazy. Did you get to get your hands on some action sequences? My guy doesn't get his hands dirty. <laughs> My guy does. Billionaire he's classic. He's, uh, he's got people to do that for him. And uh, yeah, he does. I, there was one moment, because I was so I was so envious of watching everyone do stunts for most of the film, that there's one bit in the end where I have to crawl out of a hole. And I was just like, I'm just going to do a roll. I'm just going to roll down this hill. Uh, and so I think that made it into the movie, so we'll see. And all the insurance people started sweating. Yeah, like, Why? Why? There's no pads. What are you doing? <laughs> now, my, my last thing for you, I don't know if you, if you read fan castings and stuff like that. On comicbook.com, we've covered this one often. There's a lot of fans who Wolverine. think of Wolverine. I mean, mate, I hear people, it's it's the most so you did hear point it. people. Because so many times people come up to me like, hey man, I heard the Wolverine news, that's really cool. I'm like, mate, it's not, I don't know anything about it. Like, I appreciate that somebody has clearly gone like, Wolverine's actually short in the comic books. We should get like a short guy to do it. But but I don't, I don't, I don't see my, I don't see them going from Hugh Jackman to me afterwards, but who knows? Prove me wrong, Marvel. <laughs> I can't wait to see The Lost City, but thank you so much. Great to meet you. Nice to meet you. 
fellas. The flip camera going? Yeah, this we got the. Awesome. We're, we're a one man crew tonight. I Thank you for, for in, indulging it. me here. Uh, 15 years ago, you guys brought The Last Romantic here. It was your first film at South by Southwest. You premiered it. You're back now, the big studio film. You've A list talent in the film. I mean, if that's not a milestone, I don't know. How, how does it feel to be back where it started? It's, I couldn't imagine a better place to come back to because it's, it's what started us. Um, and it, it's, it's really meaningful to have, you, you, we, you, we came to South By back in 2006 with kind of a dream of what our career would be, what kind of movies we'd be making. And then to be at that place in our career and have it happen here at South By, like I couldn't imagine something more perfect. Agree. <laughs> well, I second that. <laughs> Congratulations on that. Now, I want to hear when you, you guys shot this through the pandemic, and I'm curious because the trailer shows us a, a globe trotting adventure. How much globe trotting did you get to do? How much of it? I heard you also built some pretty impressive sets. So I want to hear about the experience of shooting this throughout the past couple of years. It, for us, you know, we grew up on movies like Raiders and Romancing the Stone, and so we wanted to shoot the movie in the real place. Like, we didn't want to do a bunch of blue screens. So we flew out to the Dominican Republic and shot the movie. The entire movie is shot there. And it was, you know, I think it gives the movie that gravitas and that epic scale that we wanted that those 90s movies, 80s movies had. We, 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 we wanted not just our characters to get whisked away on an adventure, but we want the audience to be able to do that. And there's no better way to do it than really go on that adventure. Put them in there. I love it. It gets the cast in there. It gets the blood yeah, flow in yeah. tow. Yeah. Uh, I also know Sandra was a, Sandra Bullock was a producer on the yes. film, and I've heard she's very involved creatively and yeah. loves take, taking uh, every bit of creative liberty she can and you know put her heart into it. I love to hear about working with her as a producer. What was it like? What kind of input did she have on the film? Oh, she's an incredible producer. It's not like a producer by name situation. Situation. She was in development of the script. She's in production meetings. She cares very much. But what's great also is that she can be disagreed with. You can push back. You can have conversations because it's not like somebody's just like, she's coming in and saying, I want to do this thing. She's involved the whole time. Yeah. And it's just a, a, a uh, integral yeah, part. Yeah, it's a creative collaboration. And, and uh, you know, someone of her caliber doesn't need to be accessible and available, but she makes herself accessible and available because she cares. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, what I, one thing I'm very much looking forward to seeing is Daniel Radcliffe play a villain. Oh, I want to hear about that because we know him as Harry Potter. He grew up a hero before the whole world's eyes, and now he gets to play an eccentric billionaire villain. I want to hear about what, what did he bring to it? What kind of direction did you guys give him? He, you know, Daniel, we, we knew we wanted Daniel from the start. We're such huge fans. I saw him in Swiss Army Man playing a dead guy, and I was like, if he can do that that well, this guy can do anything. Um, and he, he just brings this incredible professionalism. He cares so much, and then he's like, totally like moldable on set he'll try anything and so we just we just wanted him to show a different side of himself we wanted the world to see a daniel in a different light yeah cool and i also the, the, one of the last things about this film i have another question about another project for you but first i want to hear about getting brad pitt on board to this cameo i know sandra and brad like kind of owed each other a cameo there but it's a pretty cool role that i've heard he has in the film i can't wait to see it talk to me about bringing a legend like pitt onto the set it was uh we had, it was one of those pinch yourself moments because we're like, what about Brad Pitt for this part? No, no, Brad Pitt's not going to do it. And But that's that's where having somebody like Sandy in, in the project makes all the difference, too, because now it's a friend who she can talk to. And, yeah, yeah. Real casual. Real casual. Yeah. Let me call Brad. Yeah. 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 And yeah. tell him about the project. And so, like, next thing we know, this, this, uh, you know, this dream casting that we didn't think was possible, he's in the jungle with us, uh, sweating it out. Yeah. Um, uh, um, yeah, and it's incredible. Like, it, it, audiences are going to love it. Yeah, it's cool. I can't wait to see it. i got to ask you guys, how's the hunt for He-Man going? What are you guys looking for there? Oh, man, it's good. We cast He-Man. Oh, he's been cast. Yeah. I Googled it today, and I didn't see it. It's Kyle Allen. It's a young man named Kyle Allen. He's amazing. He's like, he's like, he's, he's can do all martial arts, acrobatics, and he's incredibly talented, funny actor. Like he's, yeah. he's going to blow up. He's awesome. And now that it's at Netflix, I mean, what kind of, does that open any new doors for you guys? What is that experience going to be like? What do you want to do with it? Netflix is a great place to be making this movie. Uh, the, the everybody over there is so enthusiastic and supportive of it, and and, and it's a wild, crazy property. And, and and our approach is we want it to stay wild and crazy, and they're totally behind it. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, well, thank you so much. Can't wait to see Lost City tonight. Enjoy the night. So Sandra Bullock calls you and she says, "I got this idea called the Lost City. Tell me what the first pitch was. What brought you on board?" She said, "I think there's a really good idea in this script, and if we, and we can make it better. Do you want to? If you want to do it, let's do it." 
And here we are. I can't wait to see. And here we are. Exactly. I've I've heard Sandra, as everybody has referred to her tonight as Sandy, uh, is is quite a hands-on, involved producer, and I think that's amazing. I would love to hear about the collaborative process between you two and bringing this one to life. Very one. You know, I said as I said earlier, one plus one equals three. Like we were joined at the hip. We made all the decisions together. You know, even when she's in the scene, she's producing. And for me, it was. You know, it was a part. It was a partner. It was an unparalleled partnership. I mean, really, she she made me better at my job, and and vice versa. That's cool. Now the director is right here next to us, Adam and Aaron. I heard you two watched a movie called uh, Bank of Robbers, Band. and that was, Band of Robbers, and that was uh, what and what brought you all to yes. land on them, yes. brought them onto your radar. Uh-huh. What was it about these two that you said these are the guys? These are who we want to helm this one. They were the most unlikely heroes in our story, I gotta tell you. You know, the film speaks for itself. You know, they've made this film, cult classic now, The Band of Robbers, and Sandy and I watched the film, and we were like, this is the kind of voice that we need to come and tell this story that we haven't seen for a while. And their energy and enthusiasm and willingness to, like, actually be soft and sappy, too, was just what we needed. We love some good heart in a film. We love a little heart. Now, I also, this cast is awesome, and everybody's playing really Really cool roles to see them in. Sandra's going on an adventure. Daniel's playing a villain. Channing is playing kind of like the, yeah. the model. Yeah. I don't know if he's a love interest or just an adventurer himself. And Brad Pitt shows up. I, who surprised you the most? Who were you really excited to the first time you saw the cut of the film that you were like, that's a performance that really felt like a game changer? That's like, who's your favorite kid? Uh, they are all so good in the movie and everybody brought their best. I mean, they really showed up. And, you know, we were like a little family living in the Dominican Republic with the locals were just incredible and everybody came and brought their best. And no matter how hot and how tired and how hard it was, how many big spiders, you know, we did it. I got the spiders. I'm out. I'm out with the spiders. I'm with you. I want to hear about Dominican Republic because you guys shot this over the past two years when a lot of people were obviously running into obstacles, yep. traveling, yep. going into production, having a lot of people together. What was it? You guys were you able to build big sets? Was it all kind of real locations? Was it a combination? I'd love to hear about that. Combination of everything. You know, there are beautiful stages there. We brought in some great craftsmen. There are some great people on the ground. But we went into the jungles and we did it for real. You know, a lot of what you see in the movie is the real deal. Yeah. Oh God, they're real. No acting required. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I can't wait to see it. Thank you. Thank you. Dana, it's, it's so nice to meet you. It's such a pleasure to meet you too. Congratulations on the film. I'm very excited to see it. I want to hear about, as the writer yeah. who writes a story about a writer going on an adventure, how much do you immerse yourself in that and imagine yourself in that position while creating a story like this? I honestly kind of do it with all of my movies and I it's, it's usually it's like a real stretch. Like my, ma- my last movie was Cruella and I was like, oh yeah, like and I'm sort of British and I kind of, it's like, no girl, like you're nothing like this lady. She is so put together. You are such a mess. Um, but this Cruella one, was great by the way. Thank you so much. Amazing. A lot of really great writers worked on it. I felt lucky to be a part of that team. It was really, really fun experience. But yeah, this one was great because the people involved are just so incredible and I got a chance to work with Sandra Bullock during a time when I was like we're locked in a house I've got three kids they're all in Zoom school I don't know what the hell just happened like the whole world just literally fell apart and that was one of my first calls I got was Dana will you rewrite this movie and I was like oh my god yes I get to talk to Sandy Bullock like please yes and so we had such a good time working together and you know I feel like you know as the writer on this one it was very easy for me to access the like wanting to stay home and sweatpants like I I entered like the soft pants revolution like it was very hard for me to put the dress on today I was like struggling I was like oh has it always been this like weird and clothes and shoes so what are these jeans what is this denim I like to refer to them hard pants (laughs) yes I put on hard pants the other day it did not go well I took them off by like midday my friend I don't blame you Um, so yeah so it was very easy to get into that part of it where it was like oh she's the person who lives in her head and she wants to stay in her bathtub and she kind of wants to like be done with life and sort of not be out there and so for me the real fun was getting to project myself into that and then kind of be like I also would sort of not be great in a jungle experience (laughs) Um, and then being able to write for Channing Tatum honestly I'm a huge fan of his and I just think he's great and so it was so fun to imagine like a dork like me with a guy like that and sort of how would I be and how awkward would I be with someone like that so that actually leads me to my next question when you came on to start writing was the cast in place and you had them in mind while writing characters like did you know you were writing Daniel Radcliffe as a villain or did you start writing this villain and he came on and then the magic went from there that's a great question when I came on there were two really good scripts that have been ahead of me and I loved them and 
I all we had was Sandy and I think that the conversation had been about the other part we weren't sure who the guy was going to be it was going to be Ryan Reynolds for a minute but then he had scheduling issues and I'm such a huge Ryan fan and so that was sort of the hope was that and then Ryan had a scheduling thing and so we started talking to Channing and I heard about that and I was like oh my god he's he's so great for this too like I couldn't believe that there was a way to make it incredible and so he I think I knew about him when I came back on to do some more work but in the beginning it was just Sandy and frankly when I start writing things you know I actually don't love writing for people in the beginning because if I get the person in my head I can't believe always that the character is real and so I had Sandy and she's so incredible and I knew she could crush it but I enjoyed not knowing it was Daniel Radcliffe or whatever and then once we had those people and I did get a chance to come back on and write for all the specific people and know who they were that was like an absolute delight and a joy especially since my children are like are you kidding me like wait who is playing Fairfax and I was like yeah, it's Daniel Radcliffe. Exactly. Like, exactly. My, kids, my kids are like, we don't care about your career. Like, We want to come to work today. Are you've ever worked with? Like, who are those people? We have no idea. We're like six, seven, and eight. And then I was like, dude, Daniel Radcliffe is playing the bad guy. And my kids were like, what? So, I mean, I am so excited to be the cool mom now to be able to say that I did something. Big points there, big points. My last question for you, I want to hear about some of the inspirations. There seems to be like Romancing the Stone and other, other movies that may have... Uh, of some tones that, that, yeah. that uh, end up in the Lost City in really fun ways based on the trailer. I'd love to hear about any inspirations you've found in other films. I mean, I'm like in my early 40s and those are the movies I grew up on. I was an Indiana Jones freak. I was a Romancing the Stone freak. I loved those movies. So it was in my DNA. It was very easy to sort of like go back to those places in my head. And I wanted it to feel really nostalgic while at the same time, it's making fun of itself like literally the entire time. Like it's like, we're idiots. Like, we know we're idiots. It's okay. Fun. You can laugh at us. Yeah. You can have fun. Because you're never going to do action adventure better than Indiana Jones did. You're just not. It's the best, greatest thing of all time. So we would be like, hey, we're doing it, but are we really doing it? We're kind of making fun of ourselves while we're doing it. So I'm hoping that it, it worked for people, but people seem to really love the movie. So I'm I can't wait to see it tonight, Dana. Thank you so much for the time. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Thanks.